world, boyfriend back with another pickup video, and this time we're getting down to it. The SoCal Retro Gaming Expo. That's right, it has come and gone. I came and went, and lots of great things were obtained. But first, I just want to talk a little bit about the expo. Wow, this was awesome. Uh, these guys went above and beyond. They started out small at Frank and Sons, and they grew. Now they were at the Oregon Convention Center. And to all the guys who put it on, Steven, and I wish I knew the rest of the people's names, but I don't, uh, they did a great job. It, it, was, it had so much more space. They had so much more to offer. They had an arcade. They had a free play area. They had uh, bands come in. They had so many more vendors this time. And it was just all around bigger, better, and I am so looking forward to the future of what these guys are gonna offer. And it was a lot of fun meeting up with the Cartridge Club members that were able to go, Vintage Video Game Geek, Matt Bandy, Chris Roberts, and NES Complex, we all kinda had our little, uh, I don't know, what, what would you call it, Five Musketeers, that was our little uh, a gang that we had going on. It was just really fun, game hunting with all those guys. And yeah, I have nothing but praise for the SoCal Retro Gaming Expo. I'm really looking forward to it next year. And now that I have an expo in my own backyard, oh man, I wanna try and get people to come down. So I'm talking to you, uh, Q Dogs, uh, Nest Doctor, all you Portland people. I think you should come down and check out the SoCal Retro Gaming Expo next time, huh? How about that, a little, little compromise since we've been to Portland. Now you can come and stay on our turf, hang out in my backyard. What do you say, what do you think about that? Uh, anyway, let's get down to the pickups, huh? Very exciting. I have a very focused uh, selection of pickups from the SoCal Retro Gaming Expo. I went in with two things in mind. I want to complete my Super Nintendo collection, and I want to complete my Nintendo Power collection. And while I didn't complete either of those collections, that would be ridiculous because I have, like, so much left, I did get closer to that goal. Uh, and then I did get one other game, so... If you came for anything besides Super Nintendo and Nintendo Power, well, you're going to be disappointed because that's all I got. So, without further ado, let's get into the Nintendo Powers that I picked up. Now, here's the thing about the Nintendo Powers. If you've seen, if you kept up with the vlogs that I put up uh, for the SoCal Retro Gaming Expo, you, you'll, you'll see that I, come across, I came across this Nintendo Power lot. And, dude, this was the best freaking lot of Nintendo Powers I've ever seen. They were pristine condition, and I mean pristine. It was like the guy, and it was all one guy's collection, it seemed like. So it was as if he had a subscription to Nintendo Power, and he didn't even read them. He kept all the inserts in, and uh, just immaculate condition. It was, it was really exciting to come across that. So, of course, I had to get as many as possible, and my idea was that I want anything that has, because, you know, a lot of people think of Nintendo Power as having just like the poster, right? And that's a complete version. No, Nintendo Power has so much other crap in it. Not every issue, but a lot of issues have, you know, Pokemon cards, comics, stickers, overlays, iron-ons, posters. There's so much. And so I've started making a more detailed list for my collecting of what I want to get. And uh, I immediately went after those issues. Anything that had more than just a poster in it, if it had weird stuff that is very hard to come across, especially find still intact in the magazine, that was what I went to first. So I ended up getting a lot of upgrades for issues I already had, just because I was missing, you know, this or that or what what have you. So about half of the Nintendo powers I got were upgrades. And I'm gonna quit blathering on. I'm just gonna show you what I got. Let's get to it. So the first Nintendo Power issue I got was volume 44. And actually, I gotta thank Chris Roberts for uh, reminding me about this one because this was one of the earlier, this was the earliest issue I got. And I forget what's in it, but it has a lot of stuff I was missing. And he said, if you don't get it, I'm going to get it. But I was like, well, I, I, I'll, I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. And I did. So volume 44, upgrade. Another upgrade was 124. And you know, I'm, I'm sorry. I wish I could tell you what each upgrade had in it that I was missing before. Um, but I just don't. I don't, I don't know. There's so many issues. And, and it's all different. I wish I... I'm sorry. So I'll try and get through these quick. Uh, 116, another upgrade. Um... 89 upgrade and all these aside from what came inside all the condition is better i mean this i don't know if this video is ever going to do justice to how great and clean these are uh 138 was an upgrade 196 was an upgrade 
$199 was an upgrade. And then this was also an upgrade, but also there's variant covers. It's kind of like the Star Wars um, Shadow of the Empire series where there's like IG-88, Boba Fett, a Stormtrooper, Dash Rendar, four different covers. Well, this is a Pokemon one, I think for black and white, I think, but there's um, two covers and so now I have them both. And this one's actually complete with all, all the accoutrements inside. So those were all the upgrades I got. Uh, and these were all the new issues that I got. Again, complete, perfect condition, 139. Uh, and this says Banjo Tooie on the cover. Oh, I want to thank Michael Sweet. This is from the Michael Sweet collection. And uh, he kept it very good. 141, Paper Mario. I just played this, not the original, not the 64 one, the um, Thousand Year Door on GameCube. Really fun. I enjoyed it. A lot of fetch quests, though. A lot of fetch quests. 143. Game Boy Advance on the cover. Uh, 151 with some Super Smash Brothers Melee. That's a good one, huh? Everybody likes that game. Uh, 152 with Pikmin on the cover. There's actually like a real cover underneath this. Um, I think it's still Pikmin anyway. But um, yeah, what is this? Pikmin 1, 2? I don't know. One of those. Uh, 156 with Spider-Man on the cover. You guys all excited for the new Spider-Man? Spider-Man Homecoming? That's gonna be a fun movie, huh? I really liked him in Civil War. Resident Evil, volume 200. This was good. I always like getting those big, like, 100, 200, um, 250, 50, 150. I don't know why. I just like getting those. This has got Resident Evil on the cover. I think this was the GameCube one. Oh, no, this is Deadly Silence for the DS. Really fun game. Uh, just a remake of the first one, but it's fun. Uh, 201 with uh, Chibi Robo on the cover, I think, right? Uh, two more. 203. So I was missing a lot around 200, I guess. Uh, and finally, 244. And that's uh, Mario and Luigi in uh, Bowser's Inside Story on the cover. So there. Oh, you know what else I forgot? Look at that. I got this. I got this. I got this awesome hat, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You see that? I got hat hair. Uh, so we got uh, the boys on there. And then the back, it says, Cowabunga. Love it. Yeah, so anyway, got that one to show that off. I always try and get a little apparel when I go to these things. Oh, I forgot I got this. I got, um, what is this? 8-Bit Turtle Restoration Tools. So as you can see, that was uh, four whole dollars. And this is the bits to open up uh, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, um, and NES games, and then I got the uh, the screwdriver, so you just slide the bits in, and you can open up your games and check that the boards are real and not reproductions. And that was all I had for Nintendo Power, so let's get to the games. The games. What games did I get? Well, like I said, I only got Super Nintendo games, except for one. There was one game that I have been looking for for about two years, and now, mind you, I, yes, I could go on eBay and find it, but you guys know I don't go to eBay. I don't go online for games. I find them in the wild. It's the thrill of the hunt, and I like to support small businesses. So what is the game? Well, if it wasn't for Chris Roberts, I gotta thank Chris Roberts again, uh, because I thought I had checked this uh, particular seller for their the, this game, and I didn't find it. And um, Chris Roberts came back to that place with me, and he's like, did you check this one? I'm like, I already checked. And I was like, ah, oh, well, I'll check again. And lo and behold, there it was. I was very happy, and we bundled it together. So Chris Roberts gave me a deal. Like, I got this game for cheaper because he got some games as well, bundled them all together. I gave him money, ipso facto. I am now the proud owner of Burger Time for the ColecoVision. So Burger Time is one of my favorite arcade games. And this is a very faithful arcade port. And I love the ColecoVision. I got one, gosh, what, a, over a year ago, a year and a half ago now, I think. And yeah, I love it. Uh, so I've been looking for this game forever. This is like the one ColecoVision game that I absolutely wanted in my collection. And now I have it, so I'm very excited. Found that, thank you, Chris Roberts. Am I missing anything? Am I mi missing anything? Uh... 
Yeah, by the way, I mentioned the vlogs before. If you didn't see them, uh, Vintage Video Game Geek came out and stayed with me in Los Angeles with Layla and I. And uh, unfortunately, Layla wasn't able to go to the expo. She um, was busy that weekend, uh, but uh, Vintage went with me. We stayed with NES Complex. It was a good old time. I love hanging out with those guys. Uh, so if you didn't see those vlogs, go check them out um, so you can really get a sense of how that whole weekend went down. But Super Nintendo games, let's go. First and foremost, Super Goal 2. Another soccer game. I always talk about these soccer games, trying to get them all. Well, uh, there was Super Goal and Super Goal 2 on the Super Nintendo, and I have them both now, which means subset complete. You're going to start seeing this a lot. I guarantee it. Uh, NBA Live 98. Now, I actually got this one, and I think Super Goal 2, not at the convention, but uh, a couple days prior when Vintage and I were going video game hunting. Um, but yeah, NBA Live 98. It's hard to find with a good label like this, so I had to pick it up. Uh, I still need some NBA Live games, though, so I cannot say my two little words that I like saying. Tecmo Super Bowl 3. Again, I got this before the expo, so, uh, but it's a good label. Hard to find. No sports games. Space Football. Space football. I got this before the convention. What, God, what did I actually get at the expo? Oh, here we go. I think I'll... Okay, so those are all the things I didn't get at the expo, with the exception of one more that's coming up. All this other stuff I got at the expo. Son of a gun. Girlfriend just called me. Screwed up my video. Luckily, I can do little minimal edits now. Uh, yeah, so next game I got. Now we're into what I got at the expo. And the first game is... Time Tracks. You guys ever played this, Time Tracks? I think it's based on like a, a movie or a TV show or something. It's kind of a platformer, run and gun, you know, very generic. It looks like all the rest of those knockoffs. Um, Spanky's Quest. Spanky's Quest. Yeah, so this actually was a little surprising. I was, let's see if I can get it better. There we go. Anyway, uh, I was I was trying it out. It, it reminds me of kind of a bubble bobble type game. In fact, you like blow a bubble. Um, yeah, so it's one of those like kind of puzzle platformer uh, type games. Anyway, yeah. So this is the other one that I found with Vintage before the Expo, and that is Air Cavalry. Now, it's a little beat up, but honestly, I have never ever seen this game in real life besides this time. I had to pick it up. Um, it's just a regular helicopter game, but for some reason, I never see it. And it just drives me nuts because it's not supposed to be like a particularly uncommon game. Um, so yeah, so I saw it, picked it up, and that's that. The rest of this stuff I got at the expo, and there is only four games left. Uh, ooh, Ultima, Runes of Virtue 2. This was the last Ultima game I needed, which means subset complete. And guess what? I only needed one more Top Gear game as well. Top Gear 1, Top Gear 2 I have, but I was missing and now own Top Gear 3000, which means subset complete. Two more. Kind of the creme de la creme. It was the first games I got. When I went to the expo, actually, I went with some trades, actually. I, like, never do trades, but I had some trades, and I brought some trades, and I traded them. And thank God I did, because I don't think I would have bought these games otherwise, because these games are just getting way too expensive, way too expensive. But I paid way less than I normally would have. And OG Gamer won, um, which was, they had one of the best booths at the expo. They, um and they had tons of stuff, really cool stuff. They had a stadium events. If you watch the vlogs, they're the, they're the guys that have the stadium events. And I didn't show this, they had a the actual like family fitness fun pad in the box. Dude, these guys had it all, it was great. But they cut me a good deal. Thank you so much, OG Gamer one Follow them on Instagram. And I got two games. The first of which is Mr. Nuts. Mr. Nuts, so this is just a, a, another platformer for the Super Nintendo. Trying to show you without all, out all that glare. Um, it's okay. It's okay. It's it's just hard to find. Hard to find. You never never come across it. 
But I'll tell you another game you never come across, and I finally have it. Uh, another mm, Holy Grail-ish type game, one I've been looking for forever. I've passed on it a few times. It's shot way up in price. I regretted it, but now I got it for a pretty good price. And it's in my collection. It's a blockbuster exclusive. What is it? Final Fight Guy. And... It was the last Final Fight game I needed, which means subset complete. Oh, it feels so good to have this game. This game, all it is, it's uh, the first Final Fight, um, but if w when they ported it to America, you could only play as Cody and Hagger. Uh, you couldn't play as Guy. And so this removes Cody and lets you play as Guy. And that's it, and that's it. And it's like, you know, over $200 now for this game. Can you believe it? Uh, plus, it was a Blockbuster exclusive. In fact, it's got all this like Blockbuster stuff on the back, which I love. I love. This proves, I mean, look, it's got Blockbuster video from, where was it? Springfield, Illinois. I mean, it proves that was a Blockbuster, at least a Blockbuster game, but it doesn't prove it was a Blockbuster exclusive, although it is. But yeah, uh, really cool. I love that sort of stuff. I am not angry at all that that's on there. If it was on this sticker, yeah, I'd be pissed as hell. But, um, no, it is not. So, that's it. That's all I got. I am slowly, slowly but surely whittling away, getting to that final 100 games I need for the SNES collection. And I don't have very many spendy games left, which is great. That's the way I wanted it. Um, I started with all the rare games. But, uh, yeah. So that's all I got. A lot of good stuff. Cannot wait to go back next year. I think the next expo I'm going to be going to is this summer. It's going to be Game On Expo that Gamester81 and Jason Heine put on um, in Phoenix. So, yeah, very excited for that. But there's going to be plenty more Booty Bonanzas between now and then. So look forward to that. And until next time, boyfriend, out. Cowabunga!